the trend of the United States suppressing Chinese high-tech companies has been escalating since 2016. Among the numerous sanctions and pressures in the past eight years, two Chinese technology companies have been the most resilient. Do you know which two? Well, one of them is Huawei, whose high-end smartphone business almost perished and went through several difficult breakthroughs. Now it has just emerged from a long tunnel and seen the dawn. The other is DJI, the drone giant. Recently, DJI has once again caught the attention of the United States. On April 21, a U.S. court ruled that DJI's production of drones infringed on two patents of American company Textron, and DJI was ordered to pay a compensation of $279 million. In response, DJI did not comply but chose to confront it head-on. Want to sue me? No way. I won't pay the money. Cutting off the supply? Banning entry? You've already tried all these methods, now let's see what else you can do. In fact, DJI is the Chinese technology company that fears US sanctions the least. When it comes to dealing with sanctions, DJI may have even more experience than Huawei. Since 2016, the United States has continuously imposed various sanctions on DJI. In 2017, the US military from all branches jointly banned the use of DJI drones. However, not long after, Voice of America revealed that the US military secretly purchased 35 DJI drones because they were powerful, competitively priced, and there were no alternatives available domestically. This not only failed to suppress DJI but also inadvertently served as free advertising. In 2019, the United States devised another plan, directly blacklisting DJI for trade controls, effectively raising tariffs by 15%. Yet, DJI was not phased at all. They just raised their prices by 13%, offsetting the tariffs imposed by the United States. The result? DJI sales were not affected, but rather improved. Prior to the ban, DJI held a 72% market share in the United States, after the ban, its market share skyrocketed to 85%. Globally, its market share increased to 75%, and its market value soared by $160 billion. In reality, in order to seize DJI's drone market, the United States has supported numerous technology companies to enter the consumer-grade civilian drone market over the past few years. Starting from 2016 to the recent ban on DJI's design software, the United States has tried all means to sanction DJI. However, after eight years and two changes in US presidents, DJI remains strong and even more powerful. This is the confidence of technology, you can't do it without me. So, did DJI really plagiarize Textron patents? How did DJI achieve such remarkable success? Well, in today's video, let's discuss the legendary DJI. The crazy story of DJI starts with its Chinese founder, Wang Dao, who has been hailed as the most jobs-like entrepreneur in China. Since childhood, Wang Dao has had a passion for tinkering with model aircraft and dreamed of creating a flying machine that could hover in the air. To pursue this dream, he chose to study at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology where his research focus was on airborne hovering. In 2006, during his graduate studies, he finally created the first prototype in his dormitory. With the support of friends and pooling together 2 million Hong Kong dollars, DJI was established in Shenzhen. However, dreams are often grand, while reality is harsh. During the early days of entrepreneurship, DJI had to operate in a rundown warehouse to save money. When people came for job interviews and saw it was a small workshop, they turned around and left. For a long time, Wang Dao was the only one at DJI who understood drone technology. In order to break through technological barriers, Wang Dao placed a small bed next to his desk and worked over 80 hours per week. Ironically, instead of inspiring others, his tireless work ethic forced many employees to leave. There were even those who secretly sold technical information to competitors and posted stolen company assets for sale online. Wang Dao described this period as the darkness before dawn and once questioned whether starting the business was a wrong decision. Just when Wang Dao was about to give up, his teacher Li Zixiang brought him a ray of hope. In 2008, Li Zixiang joined DJI with millions of dollars in funding and a team of experts, saying, go for it, I'll fully support you. With his help, DJI's first product, the XP3.1, was launched in 2009. 
the technology of hovering flight helped DJI gain recognition. At that time, DJI received orders from many Chinese state-owned enterprises, with each prototype priced at 200,000 yuan, specifically for technical demonstrations to leaders, whatever they needed, DJI provided. However, Wang Dao felt that the money came too easily and that such earnings were meaningless. He turned his attention to consumer-grade products. It was this mindset that gave him the idea of combining aircraft and cameras. We all know the rest of the story. Prior to DJI's emergence, aerial photography was practically exclusive to wealthy enthusiasts. Unless you were a super millionaire, you had no access to it. In 2013, DJI's Phantom 1 was released. Upon arrival, it only required simple assembly to enable aerial filming. It was user-friendly with straightforward functionality. Most importantly, the price was very affordable. Prior to this, drones easily cost hundreds of thousands of yuan, making them unaffordable for ordinary people. DJI directly reduced the price to a few thousand yuan, making drones accessible to the public. Since then, DJI has maintained a pace of releasing a new product every year. With its superior technology and competitive prices, DJI quickly dominated the Chinese domestic market and expanded into overseas markets. During this time, Wang Dao had exceptional vision and foresight. To avoid being sanctioned, he insisted that all components, from software development to hardware manufacturing, had to be made in China. DJI retained full control of its intellectual property and did not rely on any other country. As a result, we witnessed the remarkable spectacle of DJI boldly confronting US sanctions for eight years and growing stronger in the process. In 2019, upon learning about the news of the United States abandoning the sales ban on DJI, but resorting to disguised tariff hikes to suppress the company, Wang Dao became extremely angry. He said, I'm tired of being treated as second-class citizens in terms of culture, values, and products. I hope that our products can also make Americans bow down sooner or later. Then, in a bold move, he increased the prices by 13%, returning the tariffs imposed by the United States back to the Americans. Behind this tough stance lies absolute confidence in their own technology and capabilities. Now, let's discuss the lawsuit mentioned at the beginning of the video. Did DJI, the world's leading drone manufacturer, really infringe on the patents of Textron? Well, the situation is not as simple as it seems. Textron is a conglomerate valued at 11.7 billion US dollars, engaged in multiple industries. In 1960, Autel acquired Bell Helicopter, a financially troubled company, for 32 million US dollars and transformed into a defense industry enterprise. Please note that this is a diversified multinational corporation, but its main product is defense-related. The two patents involved in this lawsuit were filed by Textron. One is the remote tracking and control technology applied for in 2004 and approved in 2011. The other is the aircraft automatic hovering control technology applied for in 2011 and approved in 2015. In 2019, Textron contacted DJI with the intention of selling these patents to them. However, DJI believed that they had already developed their own independent technology and that the two patents were unrelated. As a result, no further action was taken. In 2021, Textron sued DJI in a US court, seeking compensation of 367 million US dollars. Eventually, a federal jury in Waco, Texas, ruled that DJI's drones had infringed on two patents held by Textron, and thus required a compensation of 279 million US dollars. Naturally, DJI strongly protested against this judgment. In a statement, DJI made it clear that they would continue to appeal, DJI does not agree with the jury's decision. DJI's products do not use Textron technology. Textron is a military helicopter company, while we are a civilian drone company. They are completely different types of products. So, is DJI really innocent? Well, I'm not an expert in the field, but based on the information available, DJI does seem to have a valid case. First, the two companies have fundamentally different technologies. After all, Textron primarily focuses on designing and manufacturing military fighter jets and has a particular emphasis on military helicopters. On the other hand, DJI operates in the civilian drone sector, which is clearly a distinct field. For example, let's consider the hovering technology. 
DJI and Textron have different approaches to this technology. Textron hovering technology requires pilot operation, controlling the aircraft through mechanical and hydraulic systems. In contrast, DJI's drones have an automatic hovering feature that can be achieved simply by operating the remote controller. Second, considering the timeline, Textron patents are questionable. One aspect that causes DJI's frustration is that their technology was actually developed earlier. For instance, the aircraft automatic hovering control patent was filed by Textron on July 14, 2011, and approved on October 19, 2015. However, as early as 2009, DJI publicly disclosed the use of the hovering control technology that Textron claims was infringed upon in their XP3.1 flight control system. This is two years prior to Textron filing the patent application. Subsequently filed patents requesting compensation from companies that used the technology earlier lack reasonable grounds based on the facts. Thirdly, the patents held by Textron do not possess innovation and effectiveness. In fact, the two patents applied by Textron are not ready-to-use technologies but rather research articles written by former engineers from Bell Corporation. These two technologies have also been widely discussed in academic journals in both China and the United States. In other words, neither Textron nor Bell has ever mass-produced any consumer-grade civilian drones based on these two patents. From a patent perspective, these two technologies were already existing prior to the patent applications, rendering the patents invalid. But why did Textron still initiate the lawsuit? The reason remains unknown, but one undeniable factor is the patent trap often employed by some Westerners. This refers to the act of maliciously filing patent applications to obtain patents related to others' technologies, and then using them as a basis for litigation or compensation claims in order to hinder or exclude competitors and gain unfair economic benefits or market advantages. Furthermore, Textron took advantage of the current anti-China sentiment in the United States, influencing the jury to make a favorable ruling. For example, during the patent trial, Textron consistently emphasized that DJI is a Chinese company and brought up irrelevant information, such as being included in the US export control blacklist. As some observers have pointed out, this was done with the aim of inciting and exploiting anti-China sentiment to obtain a favorable judgment. In an article by the US legal commentary media, Above the Law, it was stated, although it is difficult to determine the exact impact of this information on the jury, the comparison between a well-known military supplier approved by the US military and a Chinese company listed in the US government's ban list will certainly to a large extent influence the jury's perspective in this case. Such manipulation naturally makes DJI feel wronged. So, what do you think is the truth behind the facts? Well, thanks for your watching, and please be free to put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. See you.